David, thank you so much for coming on the AIM podcast. And thank you so much for having me. It's a blessing to be here. Dude, I'm, I've been looking forward to this episode uh, since you and I chatted. Just because honestly, man, if I'm being real, and I know we'll, we'll dive into your story and talk about some really fun stuff, man. I just, I'm so encouraged by you, bro. And, uh, you know, over the short amount of months I've known you, man, every, every interaction I've had with you, every time I've talked to you, it's just been so encouraging, so positive. And I can just see the way that God is moving in your life. And your testimony is so powerful. And I'm just, man, I'm encouraged because I can truly see a transformed man that has truly interacted and encountered Jesus. And I'm just, bro, I'm just pumped to have this conversation. Oh, I'm pumped to be here too. And I see it through you, man. We're both vessels for the Holy Spirit. We get to do his work. We get to show and be a reflection of Jesus and everything that we're doing, man. And it's a blessing and honor to be here to serve people, please God together as we, mm -hmm. as we enter into this podcast and I'm excited. Let's go. Let's go, man. And I got to give some love to our boy, Justin, man. Justin wrote yeah. the show for man. Without him, I would not know you. So I want to give him some love. And he actually was just on our show a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously, you know, we got connected through him, through his his yeah. event, Redeemed, which is an incredible event. I highly encourage people to, mm -hmm. to hit him up and inquire more about it. But uh, such a special community down in Miami, man. You guys have a really special squad down there. Yeah. Shout out to Justin. That man is helped elevate my faith and my walk with Christ. So shout out to you, man. Thank you for being who you are and leading a lot of people and changing a lot of lives. Very thankful for him too. Amen. We're going to talk about, we're going to talk about faith. We're going to talk about business. We're going to talk about leadership, sales, all, all those things. But before we even dive into that, you know, I love a little bit of fitness action, man. And I see you be getting after in the morning yeah. on your stories. What's, uh, what's that journey been like before we talk about the good stuff? I love talking about some fitness as well. Oh man. Fitness, I mean, your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So mm. right there, like, how should a temple look? How should a temple be? And we glorify God. We worship God by how we take care of our bodies. A mm. lot of obedience is how we take care of our bodies. Uh, in, in this transformation of my body, I completely got off of, and I'm going to be honest with you, I was on uh, testosterone, right? Way too early. I did a bodybuilding competition. I was on and I just felt like I had to stay on. Yeah. So completely got off of all of that completely natural vitamins, like just taking care of my body, waking up early, going to bed earlier, having a strict routine, um, dialing in the workouts in terms of intensity and really just giving it all that I've got to be able to take care of my body, not just not just for, for God, but to be, be a great representation of God. Mm. Able to be, I, I think fitness is a way to show God that you're prepared for what he has for you as well. Because wow. when you're in that workout and you're giving it all you got and it's intense, right? And you're pushing, that's a way to glorify God. That's a way to tell him, hey, I'm ready for my wife. I'm ready for the next thing in business. I'm ready, whatever you have for me, God, like I'm willing to go through the pain and endurance, and, the, and like, it starts with this morning workout right here. We're going to get there <laughs> for the rest of the day. So yeah, just transformational when you take care of your temple. Mm, I love that, bro. And I, you know, we, you hear that thrown around a lot, like the body is a temple and all these things. But when you really break it down, like when you accept Christ into your heart, you now are filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. And, and that's beautiful. And if, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are essentially, yeah, it's just something to be super, super like intentional about. I think it's easy to kind of brush it to the side. But again, it's not about having a six pack. It's not about certain things. It's about honoring God with everything you do. And our body is one of those areas of our life that we can honor him. And it's just such a blessing. It is a blessing, man. It, it is a blessing for sure. And I see you getting it too. Tell me a little bit about what's happening. I see all the workout groups. You guys are all working together. I love the accountability. I wish like Justin starting to do something there. We have a couple guys, but I think like the 6 a.m. workouts kind of scare a few people. Yeah. But uh, I, I am inspired by your videos in the movement that you guys have. And I love that you bring Jesus into fitness wow. as well. So I want to give, give you some kudos there as well. Thank you, man. You know, one of the one of the big things that I've really tried to focus on is having physical disciplines. And um, obviously, I love I love working out. I played college basketball. So like I'm, I come from a sports background. But now I'm like, man, I don't have hoops. Like I, I want to channel it somewhere. And there's the element of, of honoring God with my body, of course. 
but I just love it. He like, he's put that desire and that passion in my heart. Like I love training, but what's been really fun, even, even outside of like my traditional like workouts is daily disciplines of, of physical disciplines. And that's like a hundred pu- for me right now, it's been a hundred pushups right after I finished reading the word. And wow. again, it's not even about the number. It's not even about the exercise. It's just about saying I'm in control of my flesh. My flesh doesn't control me. It is, mm. bro, bro. I tell young guys this all the time. Guys that DM me all the time, like asking about certain temptations or certain things. I'm like, dude, yes. read the word of God. Yes. Re- rest in his presence. Those are the first two things you got to do. Find community that can sharpen you. Those are the most important things, but you should, you should ad- adopt some sort of physical discipline that you do every single day. We live in a world and a society where people want to make the excuse of just like my flesh wanted it. So I just gave in. I'm like, dude, no, you, you own your flesh. Your flesh doesn't own you. And I think that little just daily discipline every day just helps me remind myself like, God has blessed me with this body. He's blessed me with this life. I have to be a good steward of that. And I'm going to wake up every day and I'm going to show my body that I own it and it doesn't own me. I love that. So good. So good. So it's been, it's been fun, but dude, I want to, I want to get into the good stuff, bro. There's, there's so much I want to cover in this episode. You are such a, an incredible leader and obviously you've had so much success in business in the world's eyes, but it's so cool to see how you give credit and glory to God in this season of your life. And for the people listening that just maybe know you a little bit through stuff that we've posted together, or maybe they're not as familiar, like I would love for you to set the context by telling a little bit of your story, just so people can understand a little bit about who you are. And, and then we'll be able to really dive into the nitty gritty of business and kingdom business, which this episode is going to be about. Oh, I love it, man. There's so much of this story to <laughs> share, but I, I'll share like a brief uh, a brief summary of it. So I got started in insurance when I was 21 and it was a desperate time of my life. How many of you guys know that when a, you're in a time, a place of humility, it is actually a place of preparation mm. and it's a place to get your heart rate. And it's a place where you can get closer with God. It's a place that sets you up for what is about to come. The humble will be exalted. So when I was 21, uh, nothing was going great. Girlfriend had left me for another guy. <laughs> uh, and at that time, I looked myself in the mirror and I said, I need to level my life up. So I immediately started to get into fitness. I decided I was going to do a bodybuilding competition. So get ri- get ripped. And then I realized I need to move out of my mom's house and I need to go get a career. So I was serving tables at the time at Papado's Seafood Kitchen. So this is where I was. And it was a great moment in my life because I realized I need to take full control and stop letting life just hit me and be a victim. So I um, dedicated my time to finding an opportunity. It's funny, knock and God's going to answer, right? So Mm -hmm. seek, you will find. So seeking the opportunity, uh, I ended up stumbling upon uh, this company that I'm a part of. Um, where a buddy of mine reached out with insurance, you have to get licensed. Long story short, guys, I filled it four times. Wow. Four times. Four people will not continue to pass the exam after four times, by the way. My mm. first time I had to schedule it out of, uh, or not, I don't want to say like where, but really far away. And um, a week before my exam, guys, my brother had passed away. My brother died in an accident. Mm. So, Girlfriend left me and I didn't even mention that I'm $11,000 in debt. I can't even pay my rent. My rent was 450 bucks at the time. Brother had, so brother passed away and I have to continue to push on, continue to be consistent and continue to fight for what I love and what I feel God has called me to do. Whoever thinks it's going to be easy, that's not the reality. So I hold strong. I stay, right, I stay steadfast, right? The word is steadfast, meaning I'm going to keep showing up until... God's promises show up in my life. Wow. So I have this booked. Um, I have this booked the night before I leave for my my exam to take it the fifth time. My mom comes over and she feels how broken I am. She feels my oppression, this depression on me because I can't pay my rent. Uh, my credit cards are maxed out. Uh, I, life is upside down. I'm like feeling, I have all these thoughts and all these things of saying, I'm not worthy. Like, look at your life. Like all this stuff that was an enemy attacking, right? My, my, my soul. And my mom is like, Hey, I'm going to give you money. I know that it is about money. So here's some money to pay 
your rent or whatever you need to pay. So I look at my mom and I say, I'm never, I'm never going to have to borrow money from you again. Mm. I took that money, paid my rent with it. I drove to my exam. And that night um, I stayed with a friend of a friend. And that night, the person I was staying with, because I couldn't afford a hotel, they actually got broken into and robbed. So I was held at gunpoint the night before my exam, bro. Oh my goodness. The night bro. before my exam, I held at gunpoint. I remember it was like, it was yesterday. This guy was wearing a clown mask. He's probably 6'4", African-American, 6'4", skinnier guy. And he put a shotgun to my head and he said, don't move. <laughs> so, and this was probably two in the morning because I'm, I'm sleeping at this time. So all of this to say that I still, with no sleep, showed up to the exam, took my, my license insurance exam, passed the test because I stayed wow. obedient. God. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, so that's how the journey actually started. But that was preparation. So when I started into insurance and all commission-based business, I didn't realize at the time, but any adversity I was going to face almost seemed like it was easy. Yeah. Wow. That's perspective. Yeah, we'll, start there. we'll go into different sections and different principles, but that's the start of, uh, that's the start of how I got started in insurance. Well, bro, first off, wow, that that's a lot. And and I think it's safe to say that, you know, it's all, it's all relative, right? Like I, I truly believe that we all go through hard times. We all go through suffering. We all go through difficult seasons. Actually, when I was speaking to, uh, uh, Ravenscroft FCA today. One of my points when I say, yeah, guys, we don't have to run from suffering. We actually get to walk through it with joy and understand uh, God can use our suffering. He can use our hard seasons for his good. There's yeah. a beautiful verse in John 16, 33 that says, I have told you these things so that in me, you may have peace in this world. You will have trouble. You mm -hmm. will have trouble, but take heart because I've overcome the world. And this is Jesus talking and bro, like I hear your story and all I can think about is, man, God is just writing a powerful testimony for you to share and for you to bring people to him. And uh, I just want to applaud you for your your endurance, man, your perseverance. But I guess what I'd like to ask you is, <clears throat> you know, you talk about like making that transition once you finally got your past the exam and you started doing, you know, working in commission, it's like sales in general are, are challenging. Like there's a lot of people that say no, and I'm, I know you'll talk on this, but like you had the the strength and the resolve to like attack your business because you've been through, so, bro, you've been through the fire, bro. <laughs> yeah. Uh, talk. To, yeah. This is where I think we can encourage yeah. some people listening. Talk yeah. about what you learned through that stretch of difficulty that shaped who you are and helped you kind of have that success and have that resolve. So good. I just wanted to piggyback on what you said because it was so good. You mentioned peace. Mm -hmm. And when God's obedience, you have peace. And when you're away from God's will and his disobedience, you actually won't have peace. It says you won't find my rest. And that's in Hebrews. Mm. So piggybacking with that, although I was going through things, I also had a peace to me because I had the Holy Spirit. Right? I wasn't as close to him at that time, but I just had a knowing and I followed that voice. That little voice in your heart that's telling you you're on the right path, that you keep going. And so through that, I actually had a peace that came upon me after I passed. And I knew that I was exactly where God wanted me to be. So um, the 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 question, sorry, but I just I had to go on on that. That's so the question you're asking is to, uh, you're talking about adversity. Say it one more time. Yeah, just like, I want you to share with everyone listening, because this is powerful, like, what did you learn from all that? Because like, obviously you went through the fire, bro, like all these different hardships and, and really yeah. difficult challenges you had to overcome to even pass that test. Like, yeah. what, did you, what did you learn about yourself, learn about your faith in that season that kind of set you up for this next season that we're about to step into and talk about? I realized that's such a great question. I like through that specific time of my life, I realized that Number one, if you don't quit, you're going to have a testimony that God can use to transform someone else's life. Wow. Two, the harder that you get attacked, that is a direct indication of the anointing of the Holy Spirit on your life. Mm -hmm. Number three, 
that if God has already ordained it, predestined it, called it to be, it will be no matter what. So any type of attack, it doesn't matter because God will provide the outcome. Your job is to be obedient. His job is the outcome. So I realized the power of faith and the power of endurance and the power of just saying, I'm going to keep going until God shows up. And it's worked that way every single time in my life. Bro, that encourages me, bro. And I know people listening are going to find a lot of encouragement for that. I think what's beautiful is if we're being real, let's be real. Like, dude, going yeah. through something hard like that is very, very challenging. And I think <laughs> there could be someone listening to this right now and be like, man, I, like I'm, I'm happy for you and I'm, I'm inspired and encouraged by you, but guess what? I'm going through it right now. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I'm in it. So it's hard for me to remove myself and see that God is using it for his good, but that's the truth, bro. It really is for his good. And I think there's that other verse where it talks about suffering, like suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character and character produces hope. We have hope because of the suffering we go through and we get to see truly how God can use it. To your point, you said you're going to have this powerful testimony. You have it now. You're sharing it on this podcast. Like you're not able to speak on these things without having to go through the fire. And now, bro, I look at you and I'm like, bro, this is a guy who's been through it, but he still honors God. He still gives God the glory. And he shows people that even in the midst of the hardest seasons of his life, like God was still moving. God was still at work, even when he didn't necessarily feel him. And so, man, I'm just really encouraged by that. Glory, all glory to God. Without him, none of this is possible. Every good thing in your life comes from God. And I think it would have been a lot easier if I would have had a deep relationship with God. I didn't, oh, I always believed in him. I didn't always have a relationship with him. Mm. That may come later on. So a lot of the hardships and the pains that I did, did experience were a lot to do with me getting off track and me getting disciplined by God, which is a great thing. Like I was saying before, being humble is really God just getting your attention, getting your heart right, because he wants so much for you. He wants to prepare you. He loves you so much to let you go aside. So when you are saved, regardless if you have a relationship with or not, he's going to wait for you until you do, until you seek him then he's going to really lead your path. But until then, you still have this this amazing father that looks out after you and makes sure that you're on the right path to your calling, your destiny that he's made you and created you for. Mm, Wow, that's so good, bro. That's so good. So, okay, so let's keep going through the story. So now you have, you've passed the test, you've gotten your license, you're stepping into it. It's 100% commission. Yes. And you're like, bro, what is this even like? What? How does this even work? Like, I'm about to go. Yeah. Like, talk about this next season and kind of what that looked like for you so we can, <laughs> can catch yeah. up with the present moment. So good. So the next, se- dude, there's so many, there's a lot of different seasons and a lot of different things. So just that a particular season, my first year, we'll talk about the lessons and what that was like. Yeah. Passed my exam, still working part-time at the, at the, the waiting job, but I just know I have this knowing. So God put in my heart this vision to use insurance to get financial freedom and to help other people become financially free. Because a big part of a big part of you know, I guess being free is also being financially free and being able to steward God's money. So I wanted to learn these principles and I wanted to build and teach other people the same stuff. So coming in. Coming in, uh, like I, it's funny because it was so much different. No one was doing life insurance. It was not sexy. I remember office was older people. Uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with older people, but we have more, more, uh, youthful people in terms of like, no one believed in it really. There was like only a couple guys were really being super successful in office and, we it, like what I mean by we is myself and I started to build a team day one. I had this vision of us making insurance sexy. I was like, these guys like Grant Cardone and Gary Vee, if they can do this for, you know, real estate and worldly things, like what could I do stepping into this industry if I know that God has called me here? So we, it's like vision casting, getting people to believe. And even though, and it's so funny to look back now, Doug, it's like, I didn't get the training I needed. I didn't, my trainer didn't even come to my presentations. He actually was jealous of me and told me I was failing the business. Mm -hmm. None of it mattered. 
literally a fraction of what people are getting now that are still like having a tough time to even have a resilience and be successful. None of it, none of it even mattered because I had a belief mm. and that I was willing to behave in accordance. And I was willing to have my faith in God that no, he was going to always show up. Wow. So following to do just following that, uh, like people, Mac, people are drawn to people that know where they're going. People are drawn to people that can cast vision. And together, our team, we started to figure things out. So that first year, it was my first year making six figures. And we did pretty well. And um, that was the start of like where we're at. Uh, but um, yeah, I think the first year, there's, there's some, some principles I'll, I'll kind of cover. But number one, unless my armpits were sweating because I was so uncomfortable, <laughs> I didn't actually feel I did something for the day. Wow. <laughs> so I was willing to just do, just get so uncomfortable. Number two was belief. The Bible talks a lot about ask what you have to ask, but you have to ask in belief. Mm. Jesus, no miracles without someone believing first that he could. He's wow. not a prophet in his own town because they didn't believe. So if you really are into the gospels, just study how many times he asked them about believing first. Come on, bro. Us are in hindrance because we don't believe that God can actually do it. Your faith is activated through belief. So this uh, this first year, bro, I have no idea how we even did it other than we believe that God would. And we took massive action. I was not afraid. Okay, that's a key. I was not afraid. And I put my faith in God. And I was like, I just know that he's going to work it out and just blindly running through obedience and boom like wake up and it's like six figures and we got this little team going now at this point that was it that was some of the principles there <laughs> dude that's so good man you talk about belief dude i think i think that's one we should we should hammer for a second because yes like I love I love when people are like, man, I'm blessed. I have a really strong belief system around me. And that's amazing. Like, praise God that you have people in your life that believe in you. Yes. At the end of the day, you have to believe in you. Like, yes. you have to believe in yourself. And ultimately, what's more important than that is believing in God. Like you said, you alluded oh, yeah. to that. We're, uh, so, like, you're, I think you're part of the group. But we've got a group of guys that are rolling through the book of John right now. Love it. John 11 was today talking about uh Lazarus Jesus raising lather Lazarus from the dead bro and it says in verse 26 of chapter 11 and whoever lives by believing in me will never die do you believe this he ends it with a question uh. and it's it's literally what you just said bro and that's such a powerful principle that you learned and that you that you really not only uh figured out but you tested it like you tested it like you believed and you got to see what was on the other side of that and i think there's so many people that don't want to step out in faith because they don't know what's on the other side you just told a story of what happens when you believe and you got to see the fruit from the faith that you had it's beautiful bro glory to god amen bro that that here's the deal so it's funny that the bible talks about belief so much in your faith and it also talks about faith without works as what well. Okay. Dead. show me your faith i'll show you my faith by my works right that's what paul said so here's the formula that the bible lays out for us it is your mindset first so it's a belief first then it's the action okay and then it's obviously the result people think that i have to believe first once god shows me something once something happens that's not how it's actually ordained to happen in your life God said, you have to believe first. That's when you have the belief, you have the attitude to be mm -hmm. able to actually obtain a skill set in what you're doing. Without the belief, you don't even take enough action to get and acquire the skill set that allows you to be worth the value of where you're trying to go. So the believing is extremely important. Mm -hmm. And then later on, so you got to believe it first before you see it. Dang, that's amazing. So, so you have this belief, bro. You're learning. This is this is year one. You guys put in a lot of massive action. Talk yeah. talk about where it goes. Talk about the transition yeah. of how it continues to uh, increase and what it turns into. Yeah. So right after that, then this is so this is a big one that you guys got to write down. Is success is a test? Mm. 
and your and your failures are a test. God is constantly testing you in your heart to make sure that he can continue to flow through you, use you, or he's going to stir things up. He's a great father. He disciplines people he loves. So what happened was I got disciplined second year. We're blowing up. Boom. I got, I got uh, people that left me, went to another company. The reason why was pride, ego. I was not stewarding my money right. So I went from 100 to $300,000. I'm 24 at the time. And getting the nice car, the Louis, like super expensive apartment, boom. And I'm stopped doing the things that got me there. I felt like I made it because in my mind, I'm following the things of the world. So God helped me get there. I forget about God. Mm -hmm. Brian in, and guess wow. what happened? Boom. People left this and that all because I didn't keep my heart grounded in my faith. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is like, this is where it gets good. So humbling year, like leads to, a, uh, so that year, like the end of the year, it was such a great start. We we're supposed to win all these different things and a lot of different adversity happened, including people leaving. So now this is comes to 2019. This is the third year. And it is a humble year. I'm like at the point where I think everyone's going to leave. Those are the thoughts I'm having. I'm like, now I'm failure, blah, blah, blah. These are the thoughts that are actually entering in my brain. That's and real. I, up. I didn't steal my money. So I blew all of it. I'm talking all of the money. Okay. And I'm showing up and I have to sell a dream, even though my life is a nightmare. <clears throat> I have to get people to believe still. So this is what happened. This is where I found Jesus again in my life. Um, I realized I was broken. I was lost. So I get back into my word. I, I restart to, um, uh, be humble. I started servant leadership at this point. I started to say, you know what? I'm going to steward what God has, right? If he who is faithful over a few will be ruler over much. Mm. So I'm stewarding the little that I have and I'm in debt, this and that. And at this point, halfway through the year, I'm struggling, 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 but I take people out and I do something I've never done before, which is, by the way, so there's, you, you once you have a big enough business, you don't need to go sell anymore. So I was at one, one point at that time. So I re myself and go be the trainer and sell, take people with me and I'm just taking them with me and boom, like I get hit with adversity five days in a row, no sales. Bank account, look, it is drained. I'm like giving out my last money just to make sure that people, because at this time we're not virtual. We are, we're in home. I have to like come up with the money for the Airbnb. I'm talking my last dollars. And God gives me a breakthrough, bro. <laughs> I go and I get to the point where I literally am selling two or three policies. And I kid you not, I go right one of my biggest months ever teach people new revelations in the business that I've never done before, which is like booking in the home. God puts so much understanding my heart in the business and such a fire and then it lights it up. So right when I think all things are gone and done, the darkest moment of my life, God just literally stirs up everything. Boom. We explode again. By the end of the year, we're like, we're starting to really pick up personal sales. I was like one of the top leading producers in that year, 2020, we double the business 2021, we double again in income. So that's where I became a millionaire in 2021. And, um, and that's, that wasn't it. Like, that's just a like part of the journey, but that's just like right there. And there's so many principles we can digest, but, um, yeah, a pretty crazy, uh, pretty crazy oh. stories for sure. Bro, I really, I really admire and appreciate your vulnerability and your humility to share that because I think a lot of people wouldn't want to necessarily put that out there. But what's beautiful, again, it's how God can use it, bro. It's your testimony. And and ultimately, the only thing that matters is bringing glory to God and you do that, bro. And so that's, that's amazing. One thing I want to break down, because I, I want people to talk, you know, people always talk about how difficult it is when you're at the bottom, right? That it's, it's hard. It's, it's tough. But I think, dude, there's a, there's a conversation to be had about people who have success and how you handle success. Because dude, without, without the right 
character, dude, it's it's impossible to handle success without being destroyed by it. And so you know, someone once told me, you know, they said, you want your character to be able to withhold and withstand the blessing that God has for you. You don't want God to bless you unless your character is ready to withstand it. Because what will happen sometimes when we get a lot of success, we get breakthrough. We just gravitate towards that thing and then it crumbles us because we weren't, our character wasn't ready to withstand it yet. What are your thoughts on that? I, you just hit it. Yeah. <laughs> Bullseye. That's it, bro. That's literally it. Like that is the reason why you're so God is, is concerned with our heart. The whole, yeah. the whole play is <clears throat> our mind, our will, our emotion, our soul, our heart. It's God wants that because he loves it. And he knows when you have the Holy Spirit and you're directed in your mind, will, your emotions, you let him lead, your life's going to be better. Mm. So through these things, <clears throat> you're tested. These tests are a test of your heart because here's the deal. When your heart is in sin, it's hardened. When your heart is obedient and your heart is in your, in your word and your heart is is listening to God and your impurity and you're uh, staying away from sex, you're staying away from drinking, you're staying away from uh, the wrong things and in your focus on God, you hear from him more, you get a deeper wisdom, a deeper understanding and that's when you can be used by him and he gives you a little bit at a time to see how you go with it <clears throat> and what was happening when I was younger, I'll get a little bit of success and then I would go party or get in the world that was like very like half in, half out. And it was almost like I was using God instead of wanting to be used by God. Mm. Huge difference. And a lot of times people want religion because they want the principles, they want the promises. But that's not why it was created. God will give you the desires of your heart when your heart is ready to withstand the desires. Mm. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. So when you stay grounded in your faith, God is looking for people to use. He's looking to actually bless you more than you can even hope or imagine or dream. But it has everything to do with does he know? Does he know? Does he know? Does he know that your heart and you are ready so he doesn't destroy you? Bro, that is so good, man. That is so good. I, I love that, bro. And it's it's facts. It's true. And I've been in a season, if I'm being completely honest with you, bro, I've been praying some dangerous prayers. I've been praying some dangerous prayers that most people may, you know, not necessarily feel comfortable praying. But like I prayed for God to remove things in my life that are distracting me and to open up doors where he's called me to go. One of my businesses that was driving on most of my revenue got cut in half two days after I prayed that prayer. I prayed recently with with my friend Frank, who does a lot of the video work for our, our speaking and our show. I said, dude, I don't want God to bless me unless I'm ready, unless my character's ready to withstand the blessing. And the world died to be like, why would you pray that prayer? Like, don't you want to be blessed? Like, of course I want to be blessed. But my relationship with God is so much more important than any dollar I could make, any platform I could have, any amount of followers, whatever that looks like, dude. I want my heart to be right. And I'm not perfect, dude. Like I struggle with stuff every day. I struggle with pride. I struggle with all these oh, things. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm pursuing Jesus with everything I have as an imperfect person, just literally resting in the, the fact that he's done everything that needs to be done for me to just rest in him. Yeah. But I'm like, bro, I don't want it unless I'm ready, bro. I don't. Yeah. I really don't. Oh, yeah. Me either. I'm with you, bro, because I know what happens. And this is how this is funny that you're saying this because what happens is we rush God's hand patience and like leaning into obedience is because God has a perfect time so when we rush it like all the relationships that I've had an amazing one right but not my wife mm. and it always has led to hurt and how I look back and I'm like that's why God didn't want me to date this person sometimes we find validation on things that are not valid because the person that is our true validation is the Holy Spirit. And if he doesn't check off on it, it's just not what it's supposed to be. Wow. So now in mature, in mature DC, I wait for the leading of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I am not trying to brush it because I know what the heck's going to happen afterwards. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Dude, that's, that's facts. And I, I think there's like, there's something to be said with, 
with the patience, obviously that requires in, in that season. But I think, you know, to encourage someone, it's like, you don't have to sit back and just do nothing. Like one way you can mature yourself is reading the word of God, like get to know mm-hmm. he gives us 66 books. This is the living word. This is every single word is in here for a reason. God, oh. God allowed it to be in here. It's whole, it's, it's God, it's God breathed. Like he breathed all over this thing. It is oh, yeah. what we should be meditating on day and night because that's how we get to know God. We should be praying. We should be doing these things where we can grow and build our character, build our heart posture with him so that he can continue to use us. It's not a thing. I don't want, I don't want the message to come across as, oh, you know, I don't want to be blessed until I'm ready. And I'm just going to sit here. It's like, no, like there are things that I can be doing daily to grow my relationship with the Lord. So I can be used in a greater way to advance the kingdom and to, to lead more people and to, you know, do more things for God. But I, but I have to have that heart in the right place. I was going to, man, that's so good. As you know, write that down. A part of God, a part of obedience is action. So mm-hmm. you're not obedient, sitting back and not doing anything. God is a God of action and taking territory. So through the obedience comes the promises. That means you have to put your faith to action. Wow. And the um and, and to, to piggyback on that, patience is endurance too. Patience actually, if you look up the the um uh, the Greek meaning of patience, it actually means suffering. So you're waiting and suffering. You got to be okay with it because that is, again, the waiting or the patience is preparation. And when you look at it as that, so when I'm in my workouts, I'm like, man, I got to look sexy because my wife, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing this like business. I'm like, man, I just got, I got to get it all I got today because I know that God's bringing me my wife. Mm. Think about my kids already. I'm like, I got to do this because I want to, I want to break generational curses because my kids need a father like this. Wow. But when you start to do the things now in preparation, you're showing our father that you're ready to steward his daughter. You're ready to steward what he has for you. So that could be every reason why something's not moving in your life because you're not moving. Get up, get ready, get going. Like it's time to take massive action. It's time to show God that you are ready for more. Mm, man, that's so good. I love that, bro. Glory to God. I want you to, I want you to catch us up to real time. You know, March 29th, 2024. You, you kind of you've talked to all these different <clears throat> Jesus yeah. of your story, and there have been so many cool lessons that we've been able to pull apart with this with this episode. I want yeah. you to catch us up. So then we can really dive into building a kingdom business. And yes. I know, you know, you and I spoke offline uh, just about how where you are now in your faith as a leader, you were doing things, you were building with biblical principles. You were building this business in a way that honors God and, and honors um, what he's called you to do. But I want you to catch us up to where we are and then we can kind of dive into some of those things. So where we are now is a place of being just obedient to God's voice and letting them into all aspects of my business. Like there is not one sales call that I'm not praying to say, Holy Spirit, speak through me. Give me the tongue of the learn. Give me your wisdom. Give me the mind of Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus over my business. Give me the perfect communication skills on this call. Like from everything that I do, I understand my business is God's business. Mm. I'm a steward. I need to be faithful. I need to multiply it, right? I need to take my five talents and I need to double it. That's how I view it. So catching up now is like just really fully getting, um, using business as a cross ministry for the kingdom of God. Wow. Nothing that I do is just in temporary things, right? It's in for the kingdom. And I'm using this influence now to have a voice in a dark world, which is sales business. And I want to be the brightest light I can be for Jesus Christ because people need it. So yes, things are great. Now, you know, we're number one right now in our category for the month. We're coming off a huge month, helping more people ever, ever before make, make money. And that's amazing. Incredible. People are taking their monthlies or their, their annuals, what they used to make and making it in a month. That's all amazing, but it wouldn't be without God's wisdom, directing the leaders in his presence and the anointing that gives us supernatural ability to do what we are doing. And that's why when you're obedient, you put him first, the rest is added. 
Mm. Man, that's, that's good. And I think, you know, it's really, uh, you know, I'd say most of our audience, not all of them, but we do have a fair amount of, of community here with this podcast that are entrepreneurs that are in business. But I think it's safe to say that, you know, there are some people out there that don't think God and business can go together uh -huh. you know, or even just make like take business, just even making money in general. And yeah. so I think what's cool is that you're saying, no, no, no. Like, everything I do is for God. Like this uh -huh. business, like this, what my line of work is actually like my ministry. Like I'm not a, you know, you, I know you, you do to speak and you do some public speaking, but you're not a pastor in a church every Sunday. You're not, you're not rich at, at VU, right? Uh -huh. But you still have a ministry. And we actually just had Christian Huff on the pod and he was talking about the same thing. He was like, dude, what are the desires? What are the passions? What are the gifts that God's given you? Use them as your ministry. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're doing through your through your line of work. So I think that's so cool to talk about because I think more people need to recognize that you can you can share the gospel. You can be a follower of Jesus in everything that you do, no matter what industry, no matter what job, no matter what hobby, yes. you can yeah. always bring Jesus into everything. So good. So good. I would encourage those that don't think that the Bible wants you to be rich and look at what happens when you're obedient. Go study Deuteronomy. Go study the story of Abraham. Go study King David. Go study King Solomon. Go study these men that are in the Bible being used by God and that are obedient. I'm telling you, it's there. the rest is added. And all these guys have different things that they were great at, but God has used them in mighty ways. And what a shame it would be to not use your talents and your gifts and your abilities for the glory of God. Ultimately, why else are we here? If it's not to save souls, if it's not to praise God, if it's not to give him the glory and wherever you're at, whatever business you're at, I, I would challenge you to make him a part of it. I would challenge you to not seek your own glory, but to give up the glory to him because there's one person that sees that with your influence and that will start to stir up their heart where God can bring them back. And that is something that was given to you. That's something that God owns because we are bought by a price. We are mm -hmm. not our own. It's Christ that lives through us. When you say, I believe in Jesus Christ died for my sins, I would say uh, <laughs> the quicker we can figure that out, the quicker that the blessings uh, come from that. And that's not why we should do that. That's that's just an extra added bonus that comes through because we made it all about God. Mm. Like, I don't know how else to put it. <laughs> that's uh, good. I love that. I think that's, that's, that's really, really good. And so now again, you're in a position where this is your reality. This is your focus. You are bringing God into your business. Let's talk about, you know, as you've had tremendous success, I can look behind you and see all, the, the accolades you've, you've received, but like bigger than that, take that out of the picture, man. Like, how are you actually like, talk to us tangibly. How are you building this business? I know you talked about printing before sales calls, but like yeah. you, maybe you talk about like on the leadership side, yeah. how are you leading and building this business in a kingdom way mm -hmm. that honors God that's, that's based in biblical principle. Oh, good. There's too many principles to even share, but one is love. Mm -hmm. So you will know a man by his that. Okay love everything that i do and that's why i can have tough meetings and that's why your father loves you because he disciplines you your heavenly father disciplines you to get your attention so i love hard in everything that i do and that gives me the strength to have the tough conversation that gives me the strength to talk to a client and get him to buy life insurance that gives me the strength to look someone in the eye and say if you do this like we're and you're diligent enough and stay consistent enough and you're intentional enough you're going to be successful I can go work 12 hour days because of love and who is love? God is love. He made us in love for love by love. God so loved the world. He gave his son for us because he loves us. Mm. Jesus's leadership is who I follow and study. Talk about humility, washing his disciples feet. Talk about how much he loved them, how much he served them. It talks about like the Bible is a kingdom of the opposites. You want to see the world? You want to know how God operates? Just look at the world and do the opposite. Wow. That's literally what it is. So instead of me highlighting myself, it's all about our people. Instead of uh, me wanting to be exalted, it's our people or God. 
And I think like just the love and the humility that we get to actually see God's heart through Jesus, right? Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the way he operates, who has built a bigger business than him? You know what's funny? That's Jesus good. said, I'm about my father's business. That's Our good. father is a businessman. I'm about my father's business. Jesus knew how to lead. And if you want a great example of how to scale business, treat people like Jesus and see what happens. Mm, that's good, bro. Man, wow. You know, I I've always I've always been interested in leadership. I've always been uh just drawn to it, man. I've always found it super interesting, super fascinating. I've, you know, in the world's eyes, like in a basketball, uh, I guess, context, like I loved Coach K, you know, he he yeah. led Duke to multiple, uh, tons of national championships, yeah. coached the USA team, Coach LeBron, Kobe, all these guys. I'm like, man, you know what's so cool about him? He's so good at empowering people to yes. play hard, to play together, to do these things. I'm like, man, that's pretty crazy. But it's, as I've grown and matured in my faith, you know, I, I think and I look around, I'm like, man, to your point, bro, the best leadership book is this, is, is the gospel. Studying Jesus, man, because like you said, bro, it's just so cool to see how he chooses to lead. And uh, bro, that's good. That's good stuff. So good. I want to say too, the empowerment and delegation is a principle in the Bible. Look at Jesus. Did he go, he, he built his 12 and he imparted and he empowered that chain the ripple effect of what we are today. <clears throat> so God believes in delegation. God believes in empowerment and God believes in taking other people up and getting them and putting them in a position like coach K does so very well. Yeah. And that, I mean, that's again, a great example of Jesus, how he led. That's good. And I think getting people to believe in something that's bigger than themselves, dude, the, the disciple, bro, if the disciples, if it was all about them, bro, it would not have lasted. It would not after Jesus' death, it would not have spread to the ends of the earth. The fact is they were believing and they were working and they had a vision for something that was so much greater than themselves. And I think that's so true for business. Good leaders can create an atmosphere and environment where you're working towards solving a problem or helping people that's bigger than yourself. And that can keep you constantly fueled. Oh, okay. good. Amen. Yeah, bro. I uh I want to say this really quick. So to, to yeah. add on to that. Alpha Omega beginning in the end. God knows the end before we start, right? So that's the vision. Right? So the vision is the ending before you start. And it's so important to lead like God and have that ending to get others to start and to believe. So again, that's just piggybacking on what you're saying. Mm. It's like when you map it out, that's the best place to start. And then you work it backwards. Wow. I love that. I love the way you put that. In in preparation for this episode, I was I was just doing some research online with uh, you know, kingdom business, yeah. doing businesses with biblical principles and all these things. And you've touched on some incredible ones. I think I love that you led with love because I think that is the foundation of everything. If you don't have love, forget it. I mean, Jesus is love. Like you said, God is love. Without that, there's nothing we can really discuss. But I did find this one really cool article written by a guy named Ken. Gaz, Gaznel, I think is how you pronounce it, but it's 12 biblical principles on which to build a business. And obviously we don't have time to dive into every one of them, but I'd love to read a couple to you and, and I'd love to hear your perspective on them and also how you've, if they're applicable to you, how you've been able to implement them in your business, if you're cool with that. Beautiful. Let's go. I think the, uh, you know, the one, the one, all right, let's do number three, because I think we've touched on a couple of them, but number three says focus on profit with a purpose. So you're in a, you're in a business that's making a lot of money. You've personally have made a lot of money. How can you apply that principle where you're not just making money, but you're making money with a purpose? What does that, what does that kind of mean to you? And how have you seen that play out in your business? Well, first of all, we're supposed to do everything for the glory of God and do it like you are doing it unto God. <clears throat> so if you're thinking in terms of that, that principle, God wants us to, I, that kind of reminds me of like the talents story. Yeah. And God, and God, so for those that don't know the talent story, it's a parable in the Bible where Jesus talks about this and the talents actually represent millions of dollars. So 
God gave these talents to the, the individuals. One, he gave one, one, he gave five, right? And one, he gave two. And in this, uh, he talked about to their own ability. So that's already one clue right there. So you're taking it and their job was to profit. Their job was to profit. Mm -hmm. So God comes back, right? The God comes back into the story. And the one who took five and turned it into 10, he said, well done, good and faithful servant. He said, well done, good and faithful servant. And then that's where he drops the line. You were faithful over few. You're going to be ruler over much. So God is pleased by us profiting, multiplying our business, what he's given us. That's what he wants. Though two turned it into four. Same thing. Well done, good and faithful servant. The one hid it in fear. Also looked at God and was like, I know you're a businessman. You, you, uh, you reap where you don't sow. And in that analogy, in that, in that, in that parable, he's called him a wicked servant. So again, what you're giving, God wants you to steward it. He wants you to grow it. He's lending it to you. This business, this profit, it's to be run successfully. So that at the end of the day, God can say, well done, good and faithful servant. When he comes in, he makes an account in the business. Mm -hmm. I love that, man. It's, that's good. I appreciate that. I want to, if you have time, I'd love to cover like four or five of these because there, there's, really, there's, yeah, some, there's some good ones in here. I, I love you teeing these off, man. I think the next one I want to touch on is, mm, this is a good one. Make the move from owner to overseer. Mm -hmm. This is good about stewardship and the fact that, you know, we call ourselves business owners, but really, <clears throat> if want to be real, like, we don't own anything. Like we don't own our car. We don't own our clothes. We don't even own our body. Like we're just stewards yeah. of this all. So, <laughs> Literally. What is like, how do you view that as someone who is at the top of a company and leading so many people? How do you view steward? I know we've kind of touched on it, but I'd love for you to just kind of sum it up in this point. Yeah. And like, how do you view stewardship and what does that look like for you as you gain more? How do you steward it so well and become an overseer? So good. So a couple of these I've learned from Justin too. But these are all biblical based. Number one, like you're saying, your success is not from you. Your mm. success is not about you. <clears throat> so that's number one to understand when you're stewarding. Number two, that God can come and, and give and we have to give an account at any given time. There's a lot of parables and stories on this where he comes back. And we have to give an account of what we're doing, including that one in the talents. So what did you do with the money that he gave you? Mm -hmm. What did you do with the business that he gave you? What did you do with the abilities that he gave you? Are you using them? Are you multiplying them? Because guess what? You know what he did with the one? He didn't just take it back. He gave it to the one with 10. God is going to move the money around. God's going to move the talents around. Whatever you don't use, you lose. He's going to give it to someone. Mm -hmm. Again, being a businessman, I love God the way he thinks. He's like, okay, who's going to have the most impact? Let me just give this over here to them. Mm -hmm. So number three, third portion of stewardship is understanding when he comes back and we have to give an account we at that point have been tested and it's either going to take us to another level or we, we actually could go lower and have to wait a season and be patient to get another chance to continue to go on further in what was originally the plan. Because again, it has ever success is all about tests with your heart. And you don't believe me, go just wait. And you see, like, you'll see how God works. And it's a beautiful thing. Mm. So that's one of the three principles I understand about stewarding what you have. I love it, man. It's so good. It's so good. Another one that's that's powerful, and you've touched on this too. And I think this is something so many people need to hear. We live in an age where people want stuff instantly. There, you know, sometimes there's a resistance to hard work and, and honestly, dude, working when you haven't seen the fruit from it. And so one of the principles that this article talked about was, 
excuse me, it is trusting the law of sowing and reaping. Bro, you have sowed, you have sowed, you have sowed, you have sowed. You don't get to the point you are in your business if you don't sow and, and grind and put in the work. Talk about that because you are so qualified to speak on this, this concept. So many people want things overnight. They want to feel success as soon as they start. Talk about what happens when you sow and sow abundantly. So when you sow and you're in the will of God, right? How, what is the will of God? It's the Bible. You want to, want to understand God, you got to know the Bible. You got to be reading the Bible. To understand your calling and your purpose, it's in the Bible. He speaks through the Bible. So to, to talk about the sowing and the reaping, <clears throat> it is actually a parable in there where you, you sow, uh, you know, it, it talks about the sower, the parable of the sower. He throws some seeds on uh, the rocky ground, right? And it doesn't work out. He throws some seeds, and I'm going to butcher this parable, but he throws some seeds where the, um, the, uh, the whatever they call called, the, the other plants that go to eat it. I can't remember what they're called. It's weeds yes the weeds and then he throws some seeds where they get they get burned by the sun and then finally they lay in good ground so this parable what he's trying to, to tell you and, it, and i use it as even sales is when you stay diligent enough to keep sowing eventually the seeds will fall on good ground mm. and eventually when they are in good ground you still don't see the plant. So what has to happen now? Well, just like my business, you're making calls, you're doing the presentations weeks and weeks and weeks, and you're like newer, and this is what it's super hard. And eventually you get the sale, right? But you're still not where you want to go. And then it's like, it's like you got to battle and battle. And eventually you get this place where everything starts to pour out, which is just like that analogy of when you water and you're the sun there now and you're waiting and you're patient and this builds you this makes you appreciate everything that you're going through this gets your heart prepared right that we talk about preparation patience and long suffering right go hand in hand and then finally this plant sprouts up and you get to where you want and you finally have the fruit and it was just because you kept sowing when you quit and you let the enemy come in and discourage you, that is not biblical to do. God is never going to come to discourage you. That's the opposite of God. That's the devil, right? That's the enemy. God wants you to stay steadfast until he's trying to teach you things. And uh, that's a principle that I live by. I know that if I stay here and I know that it's the will of God and I have confidence because I have peace about it and I know Okay, that tells me that if I stay here, God's always going to provide. And if I keep sowing, and I eventually I'm going to find good ground. And then what I have to do, I have to steward it. And then I'm going to work on this. The little that I have, I'm going to be diligent. I'm going to give my best effort every single day until because I know that it's inevitable because God's promises are not lies. Those are guarantees. That's why I look at it. Bro, this out of all the ones, this is the one that I needed personally, just because like I'm in a season right now where there's some good things coming. But it's like, dude, I got to sow. I got to sow faithfully. I got to sow and honor God and trust him. Trust his promises. These are not things that are just we can just talk up in the air and see if they happen. These are the promises of God, the one that made us, the one that created us. One of my friends posted a quote today that applies to this. And uh, I read it and I was like, I have to bring this into this, this episode. And it says, the day you plant the seed is not the day you eat the fruit. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, that's good. The day you plant the seed is not the same day you're going to eat the fruit. So you need to know that going in. Like you got to sow first. You got to plant the seed first. You can't expect to eat the fruit on the same day that you plant the seed. Yes. When it's not working, it's working on you. Mm, come on, bro. All man, right. it, it always works. In the Bible, it says all work works. Work. Mm -hmm. All works lead to profit. So again, when you don't see something, it's like these invisible results. It's actually working on you. People quit because they don't like the work it's doing on them. But wow. the work on them is necessary. It's more necessary than it is the actual work itself. Mm. So becoming is the most important part and the piece to it that God needs first to happen before the plant comes.
That's good, man. That's so good. All right. I got one more for you, then we'll wrap this thing up. This one actually I think is a cool one to end with because it's been yeah. something I've been I've been processing and praying a lot about. But you need to know the order of things and work the order. And essentially what it's talking about here is knowing the order of our priorities, what's important, what do we think is important, and how do we line everything up in our life. So again, talk to us about that, knowing the order and letting uh and working the order. Oh good. God is a God of order. <laughs> you want to be like God, you, you got to understand the order. So in your life, <clears throat> God has got to be number one. Number two is taking care of the temple or the stewardship in my eyes. And Justin talked about this, which is spending your time with God, pouring in, making sure you're ready to go, making sure your cup is full to overflow onto other people. Then it's the stewardship of your relationship with your wife, right? Then it's the kids, right? So all of this happens before the business. Mm. This is super important because God is a God of order. He's always going to bless when someone knows the order of how things should be. There's a natural flow. So oftentimes we're like, oh, well, the business is for my family. This and that. Yes, if your family you, you got to get your family on board with you working long hours. And sometimes there is sacrifice, but if it is costing you your relationship, that's not of God. It's like, good. If that's your godly ordained relationship. You have to, this is the key intention. When you work, you work. When you're with your wife, intentional time with your wife, when you're with your kids, you got to have intentional time with your kids. And that order is there for an absolute reason. And then it goes everything else. And when you have that order, you're going to see more blessings and more natural flow in your life. Mm, man, that's so that's so good, man. Because it's so easy, and myself included, I I do this. I I get I start to justify things. I start to say, oh well, if I put more time in here, like it's going to help. But it's like, no, no, no. God first. Seek first. Matthew six thirty three. Seek first the kingdom. Seek first God. Seek first His righteousness, and all else will be given to you. And it's like. It's so easy to let our own mind, our human mind, justify why we're allowing other things to creep up in our list. No, no, no. God first, everything else after that. But you you nailed that, bro. That's really, really good. I I the seeking first part, the rest is added, has been the biggest blessing in my life. And I know because when he gives you the ideas, they're not your ideas. His thoughts are bigger. Her, his thoughts are better than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. Mm. And the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord, right? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So it's the beginning of wisdom and understanding comes from the Holy One. The Holy Spirit actually is your understanding and a deep revelation in everything you're doing. So we go and we want to spend time with Joe Schmo and his book, more importantly, right, more important than God, when God's like, I got a million times better ideas. If you would just seek me in my word and take some time in my presence, I will drop an idea in you that will take you to another level. And that's been the testimony for my life. Dude, that's so good, bro. Oh, man, man, this has been such an incredible episode. Dude, David, I'm I'm just blessed to have you in my life, bro. And I'm so blessed that you took the time out of your day to come on here and share so much wisdom and value with our community. And it's just it's just truly so special, man. I'm just so grateful for you, bro. Grateful for you too, bro. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> this is my type of conversation. That's you don't get to have this like level of, you know, the this level of relationship with a lot of people. So I cherish it. Mm. And you're so rooted in Christ, bro. And you reflect Jesus in such a great way, in a great representation of God. And he's got so much planned for you. And yeah, in this preparation season, bro, endure it, love it, because it's not going to be here very long. That's all I'm going to say for you. Wow, man. I appreciate that encouragement. It means a lot. Final question as we wrap all this up, man. Is is there is there one thing that you just want to leave our community with today? I know we, you've been dropping bombs left and right, but is there one thing that you just like, man, if I'd have known this when I was younger or like, this is a lesson that I've learned that's helped me so much throughout my life. Like, what is that? What, and I'm sure a lot come to mind here, but what is one thing that you would just like to leave us with today as we, as we close our time? The one thing I would say is 
seek like what you said seek first the kingdom of god and the rest of that when your relationship with god gets better your whole world will get better you will elevate in every single aspect of your life because He's going to give you the wisdom, the understanding. He's going to get your heart ready. The word of God gets your heart ready more than anything. It's, it's sharper than two-edged sword. So your soul is cleansed. You re get renewed. Your mind is fresher. You are going to be a better husband. You're going to be a better son. You're going to be a better father. You're going to be a better wife. You're going to be a better business person. You will be the best you because it is not you it is god and when you invite him in more to your life and you deepen your relationship and your walk with him you will see better fruit than you'll ever be able to have on your own that's what i recommend boom <laughs> dude thank you so much man i i like i said i really appreciate that your heart man i'm just i'm praying for god to just continue to bless your business abundantly because i know um you're you're hungry man and your heart's for him and you just want to be used and you want to advance the kingdom. You want to help more people and you want to do it for his glory, man, and make his name greater. So, David, I just thank you again for coming on the show. This has been an incredible episode of the AIM podcast. Thank you for having me. Let's go.